I know why you're all here. You want to know if I can beat Resident Evil 4 without picking up ammo. Now some of the little smarties in the audience will be saying, of course you can beat it without ammo you tard. You can use the knife, you can use grenades, you can even use eggs. <laughs> oh, that's cute. You think I'd do that? No! In fact, let's name the rules right here, right now. Rule 1. I am not, under any circumstances, allowed to pick up and keep ammo on the ground, not even to sell it. Now of course sometimes I accidentally did pick it up when it got in my way or when it was just a downright accident, but when that happened I would immediately go into my inventory and delete it. Rule 2, I'm not allowed to use my knife on enemies ever. I'm allowed to use it to open barrels and boxes, but that's it. Rule 3, no grenades can be used on enemies. I am allowed to pick them up and sell them though. I just chose not to sell ammo because I didn't want to confuse you guys or myself during the run. I know what you're thinking. If you can't pick up ammo, use the knife, or use grenades, how on earth are you going to get through this? And that can be answered with two simple words. The hunk. No, not that hunk. That hunk. And you see, like the mighty Khajiit of Skyrim, he has wares if you have coin. In a nutshell, if I have zero bullets, upgrade my clip capacity at the merchant and look at my gun, it is now full of ammo, all without me picking up ammo or reloading. So the merchant is the lifeline of this challenge, and therefore has leverage over me the whole time. Let's just say, I can still get ammo if I run out of money, but I'll have to perform a few favors. So can you beat Resident Evil 4 without picking up ammo? Let's find out. By the way, this challenge was requested by subscriber Romeo Robin. Thank you Romeo, very cool. When given the options for two difficulties, I chose the hardest one because how would I lead an empire of mad lads if I myself was not a mad lad? The Backstreet Boys dropped me off at my homeboy's crib and I gently knocked on the window to see if anyone was home. Hello? I busted into the seemingly empty house, roundhouse kicked the owner of the home the moment I saw him, and shot him in the anus until he left this earthly realm. I saw my first piece of ammo and was tempted to pick it up, but ultimately stopped myself and backed away from that unholy place. Now I did have some handgun bullets in my inventory, but I didn't pick them up, so even though I deleted them later, technically I didn't need to. I made it to the village and ran in circles for 4 minutes while also praying to Jesus. Essentially what the church calls praying on the go, run away, but also pray, Bible in hand, homie you bland, basic stuff like that. To my surprise, the villagers acknowledged that they forgot to pack their Nikes, took the loss like champs, and went to play bingo. I... I really didn't think it was possible to make friends in this sad, cold world. From villagers wanting to chop me up, to men wanting to squish me with a giant boulder, to guys wanting to blow me up, I was positive that I'd be on this journey alone. But then, out of nowhere, a friendly man refused to kill me. He sat there in his cute little hat and his cute little work pants. No. This can't be. There can't be a friendly Ganado, can there? I took the smallest step imaginable and he immediately tried to decapitate me. EGAD! I thought I had saved this poor soul, but clearly I hadn't. Luis and I met the big cheese, and then I met the man who has wares. And guess what I bought from him? Nothing. I just avoided that hoe like mashed potatoes on Thanksgiving. If any of y'all are confused, you can dodge most enemies in this game by psyching them out, which is absolutely critical for me to do in the first bit of the challenge since I'm broke as hell and my weapons aren't very strong yet. Anyway, the big cheese and I had a real bonding moment. Homie, that hat looked gay! I went back into the room to apologize to him, but he freaking decked me and then proceeded to jump out the window. So honestly, making it to Del Lago was pretty easy. You don't really have to kill any enemies and can just run by them all. But don't worry, once I get to the castle, I'll be turning into the Terminator. Luckily, I didn't have to pick up any ammo to use against Del Lago, and I was so proud making my way in this new world. Facial recognition got a hit. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Now probably one of the toughest battles of the game was the first El Thick Boy fight because my options for weapons were very limited. I had almost no money and I personally found it difficult to kill such a sexy creature, but kill it I most certainly did. And it took 13 handgun bullets, 5 rifle bullets, 50 TMP bullets, and 4 shotgun shells leaving me with only 4 shells left. Whew. Technically I could have used a rocket launcher, but I wanted to challenge myself to see how far I could go without using one. Then I met the little elf. And it was time to defend the cabin with my man Luis Serra. Look! 
The cabin was pretty easy with Luis and I working together as a team. Ashley and I narrowly escaped the second big boy. I used my TMP on the ski lift and I had my final battle with the big cheese. I tried using my no homo card on him, but incredibly, it didn't work. This was genuinely a tough fight. So tough that after probably a dozen attempts, I had to pull out the old rocket launcher. I blew him up, took a memento to remember him by, and escaped the burning barn. Are you okay, Leon? No, Ashley. I, I don't think I am. I mean, the big cheese and I had so many good memories. May you rest in pepperonis, Lord Cheese. We made it to the castle, and this may be a little controversial, but I actually gave Ashley a task. Yes, I know she's completely useless, but come on guys, give her a chance. Here was the plan. I would be responsible for grabbing the key for the big old door, and when I was sprinting back for my life, Ashley would bust the door open just in time for me to slip through unscathed. I know, that's a pretty big step from what she's used to, but I had total faith in her. And guess what? We executed the plan flawlessly. Yeah! I'm just gonna point this out, but one of the many reasons why this challenge is so hard is because when enemies die and you have no ammo in your inventory, you're much more likely to get ammo than money. Obviously, this was a huge disadvantage to me because I was losing out on tons of money. Then I met Discount Wolverine, and it was the toughest goddamn battle of my entire life. Ashley, this is gonna be a tough one. There's a good chance I won't come out of this alive. And if that does happen, I just wanted to let you know. I've always wanted to clock you square in the jaw, but I still love you. And so I walked to my inevitable death, lightly cried for seven seconds, and then immediately destroyed Discount Wolverine. Oh, yeah, I'm the best. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> The water room was fairly difficult, but eventually I was able to do it, mostly because of my 100 bullet filled TMP, the shotgun, and the semi-auto rifle for Ashley's part. Funnily enough, the playthrough seemed to get easier and easier as I went since I had more money and the weapons got bigger and bigger clips. My main goal was to get the striker to 100 bullets, because yes, you can actually do that, and the TMP to 250 bullets. These two weapons would carry me through the game. The TMP was especially powerful because not only could it hold hundreds of rounds, it also came in such handy for shooting an enemy in the foot and completely running by them safely without the need to juke them. Leon, I got it. Lewis! Lewis! Okay, Ashley, just stay very still. As long as you don't move, I should be able to free you. Freeing Ashley was pretty easy since each Ganado can be killed with a single rifle headshot, with the exception of Red Pajama Boy. Ashley's part was same old, same old, but I realized something. Ashley is able to climb down ladders. If she can do that, why did she make me catch her? Ugh, I'm feeling the powers of sexism and misogyny take over my body. Don't do it, Dante. If you make a sexist comment, you'll lose subscribers. It's not worth it. Oh, I can't take it anymore! Woman bad! There, I said it! I don't regret a thing! Now here's a part I usually don't touch on in these videos, the lava pit. Usually this part is a breeze, but not for this challenge. What I ended up doing was tricking the dum-dums into catching on fire from their own brother, and then when the boys finally decided it wasn't such a good idea to keep coming after me, I shot the chain until the final man fell to his painful death. A chain is only as good as its weakest link. I had to think very carefully on how to tackle the knights. After some failed attempts and big brain maneuvers, I finally decided to bring along a rocket launcher to assist me. So I defeated the first wave of knights, and as I waited for the second wave to come in, Ashley tried her hardest to get through the gate, but failed miserably. And I blew the three black knights to another dimension. The Novistador bridge part was straightforward. I just shot them out of the air with my TMP, insta-killing all of them. And all I did for the double Gerador part was use a rocket launcher on them, and then two extra shotgun bullets on the strong boy to finish him up. I found out that Leon had a strong fear of bats, used my vertigo door trick as usual, and found myself in the mine. I yeeted Dr. Salvador into the endless abyss, and decided to be a puss and use the dipman glitch to get by the two big boys instead of facing them head on. Looking back on this, 
Really, I should have just manned up and used a rocket launcher on one, dumped the other in the lava, and been on my way. But hey, we can't all be perfect. And using the striker on the final Novistador part was simple. But here's where we start to have problems. Now from the very start, I decided that the weapons I wanted to carry with me to the end were the TMP, the striker, and the blacktail. These weapons carried the most ammo of anything and were decently strong. The minecart wouldn't be too bad with my striker full of ammo, or at least, that's what I thought. You see, right before the minecart went down the coaster of hell, I tried to jump over to the last cart, but I didn't get the button prompt to proceed. Unfortunately, something horrifying came of this. The villager behind me didn't attack and didn't try to do anything unreasonable to me. Instead, he just sat there and watched me. I didn't know what to do, so I just froze in place. Did he want to rape me? Did he smell the raspberry Blanco Blast shampoo that I put in my hair this morning? I didn't know, but what I did know was that if I avoided eye contact and didn't see him, he wasn't there and he didn't exist. Either way, when that minecart fell into the pits of hell, I jumped out safe and sound and immediately forgot about that whole traumatic experience. Oh, 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 my back. I'll skip ahead to the elevator. Luckily, since the TMP holds so much frigging ammo, all I had to do was shoot a single bullet into each enemy's face and kick them off the platform. At first, I tried killing Salazar the big boy way, but quickly found out that his little body was more powerful than it looked. So to compensate for this, I pulled out my big boy gun and shot Salazar in his stupid face. Now right off the bat, arriving to this island was giving me cancer. The big black machine gun guy kept shooting me and I had to keep restarting the checkpoint. After doing this a few dozen times, I got pissed, pulled out my TMP, and gave him a little taste of his own medicine. How do you like it, huh? Not very much, do you? I eventually muscled my way through the pile of sweaty men and found refuge with my long lost friend the merchant. I promised him I'd keep him safe and went ahead dispatching the enemies around us. I was doing extremely well, but imagine my surprise when one of the sick, twisted dynamite fiends blew the merchant to hell. No. No! Look at what you did! Look at what you did! <gasps> May you rot in hell. Are you fucking kidding me? A little bit later on, I found out that you could actually pick up crouched guys with the crane and drop them into the hole. The same hole that Ashley and Leon later jump into. Does anyone see the problem here? After dumping these men into the endless abyss, I realized that Leon really enjoys dumping people into endless abysses. Speaking of which, look at this little security monitor next to the trash room. What is that even supposed to mean? What is that? Well there, now it's destroyed, so it doesn't matter, and it doesn't exist anymore. I finally came across Ashley, saw two thick ones guarding her door, and decided this mission really wasn't worth it anymore. I mean, Ashley's damn fine looking, but have you seen her ears? She's a freaking elf! Not to mention, she's only good for holding doors. I mean, why am I still here just to suffer? Every night I can feel my leg, and my arm, even my fingers. The jacket I've lost, the comrades I've lost, it won't stop hurting. It's almost like they're all still here. You feel it too, don't you? I'm gonna make them give back our past. Give me back my past! Give me back my past! Give me back my past. The wrecking ball room wasn't overly bad. At this point, the striker was my best friend and could get me out of any jiffy real quick. Then of course, I ran into the merchant hiding out in a little room all by himself. Oh look, Ashley. It kinda reminds me of you in a way. Okay, listen, Ashley, we're gonna have to go fast as frick, okay? If not, the terrifying monsters will probably get us and eat us. Ready? Let's go! Okay, ready? Three, two, one, pull! Oh god, you idiot, you pulled at the wrong time! Quick, let's try again, I can hear him right behind me. Three, two, one- Ah! Ah! Ashley! Ash the tractor part was easy. I mean, come on, with 20 striker bullets with me, it wasn't even a contest. Like I said, the further through the game I went, the easier it really was. So Saddler steals Ashley again, and Krauser ran away like a baby. Then I came across my worst opponent ever, Zilezas. With the U3, there's actually two spots you guys can abuse to get through this part easier. They're both in the second crate, and if you shoot right here, you can open this door, and for the next one, you don't even have to see it. It's on the opposite side of the wall here, yet you can still aim at it and shoot it. There's another one on the top, but I don't even know what that's for. I originally planned to use a rocket launcher on the U3, but ended up killing it with my Blacktail, Striker, and TMP. I used my signature finishing move on Krauser, finally blew him up with a rocket launcher after half an hour of failed attempts, and made it to the final military battle. 
This part was more annoying than a guy who parks in two parking spaces at once. But since all of my weapons were the strongest they could be, it wasn't too bad. I threw my only two eggs onto Mike's grave to show my respects, and Ashley and I removed the Las Plagas from our bodies. And here I came to the final battle. I upgraded all of my guns, spent all of my illegally claimed cash, and ended up going into the Saddler fight with 25 Blacktail bullets, 250 TMP pellets, and 100 Striker rounds. So I went absolutely psycho on the guy, completely bullied him, decided to impress Ada with my manliness. Use this! Sorry, but following a lady's lead just isn't my style. And destroyed Saddler for the first time in my life without the red rocket launcher. Heck yeah! If I were you, I'd get off this island too. <laughs> okay. Quick Ashley, let's go! The island's about to blow! And so after all that, the adventure Ashley and I had together, I accepted her invitation for overtime. Which luckily for her, was showing her how to be deadly with a door. She was good, sure, but she had much to learn from me. So, can you beat Resident Evil 4 without picking up ammo? Yes, you absolutely can, and I did. Thank you again to Romeo Robin for suggesting this video, it was a lot of fun. Stay tuned for my next Resident Evil 4 video, where I go on a mission to rescue none other than Tobey Maguire himself. If you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe to me because I make new gaming challenge videos every week. Make sure to click the bell icon or else you pretty well aren't subscribed to me. Just make sure you click that bell. Thanks for watching, check out the other gaming challenge videos on my channel, and I'll see you THICK BOYS in my next video.